church Sunday a few years ago, uh, a very passionate person about sharing uh, the good news of Jesus. He's coming to speak and give us some, some encouraging, simple, natural ways uh, to share our, our faith. So uh, Wednesday at half past seven. And another exciting new initiative from Thrive, the Thrive Fun Zone. So that starts on um, this Coming Saturday, the 29th of April, and it's going to be the last Saturday of each month. So grab one of, of these flyers. Um, we're seeking to help strengthen families by looking after our well-being together. Also for activities, painting stations, table games, sensory break space, and great coffee with cakes of wine and candy cheese. So there you go. This coming Saturday, 10 a.m., to well in war. Am I forgetting anything? No? I think I've got, I might have got everything covered there. Okay, let's uh, listen to uh, some words from the Psalms. Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord, all the world. Sing to the Lord and praise Him. Proclaim every day the good news that He has saved us. Proclaim His glory to the nations. His mighty deeds to all peoples. I'm going to hand over to the band, and they are going to lead us in worship. And we'll all stand. Uh, the same if, if you're able. 
for us to peace. Good morning, and this was a new song to us all. I uh, joined the band and I did it jointly a few weeks ago. So, uh, so it's slightly new, but not quite. <laughs> uh, let's stand. I will trust my Saviour Jesus. <laughs> No matter where, 
And we put our trust in you now and every single day. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Okay, when you came in, you will have seen those that yellow and black tape saying no entry. But we have a wee peek. Try not to be. There we go. That's the, the sanctuary. Carpets, carpets up. And then another one. There was just a, there was a fiber found. <laughs> and, and a farthing. <laughs> right. Okay. We're gonna have a wee shot at the game Simon says. I'm sure you know you know the game. If I say um, Simon says at the start of an instruction, you do it. If I don't say Simon says at the start, you don't do it. Okay? So if I say Simon says before something, you do it. If I tell you to do something, but don't say Simon says at the beginning. Okay? Righty oh. Simon says John Knox Church. Stand up. <laughs> Simon says, John Knox Church, wave your arms in the air. Whoa. Simon says, John Knox Church, hands on your head. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Simon says, John Knox Church, sit down. John Knox Church says, look up Matthew 16, 18. <laughs> 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 Anybody else seen the Bible? Maybe you've, lots of you got Bibles on your phones. You can use that. Okay. John Knox Church. Simon says, John Knox Church, look up Matthew 16, 18. Simon says, John, John Knox Church, read Matthew 16, 18. I'll read it. <laughs> I tell you, Peter, you are a rock, and on this rock foundation, I will build my church. Simon says, Jesus building, stand up. So you'll not be standing up, will you? I think so. Uh, there we go, we'll be a bit controversial that one. <laughs> Let's move on. Simon says, John Knox Church. Here's a challenge for you. Look up Philemon 1 and 2. Simon says, John Knox Church, read Philemon 1 and 2. From Paul, a prisoner for the sake of Christ Jesus, and from our brother Timothy, 
to our friend and fellow worker by Lehman and the church that meets in your house. The church is the people. Isn't it wonderful? We, we're here in this home, but we are the church. We can be the church here in the large hall. We can be the church in Gaines Hill. And amazingly, we can be the church at school tomorrow. Even just one of us. Or at work or wherever we find our, ourselves. It's the people who are important. So we're, we're not in our, if you like, spiritual home in, in, in the sanctuary, but we're still the church. We're still the church of, of God. Just because we're gathered together. Isn't that wonderful? Let's sing a song, The Big Family of God. We are part of the big family of God, not part of a building. Church is us, not a building. <laughs> I'm not going to do any actions though, am I? I'm <laughs> Helen's I am. <laughs> there are actions to it if you wish to do them, so long as you don't poke somebody off. <laughs> if you've got room. Uh, but please stand, please um, worship as you are comfortable doing, and clap if you feel you would like to. It's a super song. Big family of God. Thank <laughs> you. 
time for trailblazers and fresh trailblazers is going to be in the cottage and the crash is just going to be through that door into a small hall there. And um, we're bringing, Caroline, we're bringing them back just um, in during the last 10. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let's turn to God in prayer. Let's pray. God of mission, you are an ending love. You are amazing grace. You are the one who comes looking for us. And you don't leave us without hope. But you welcome us. You are not some far off, unknowable God, but one who seeks us out and wants to call us sons and daughters. We praise you for the Lord Jesus, the Son of Man who came to seek and save the lost. We praise you for the lengths that he went to to deal with our sin that he bore the sin of the world on the cross, the one without sin, standing in our place, taking what we deserve. Oh Lord, you are compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. Lord, you do not treat us as our sins deserve. And so we come in all and reverence. We come to you in penitence and faith in the silence. Thank you, Lord, that as far as the east is from the west, so far do you remove our sins from us. Lord, we thank you that you are the God of mission and that you call us, your servants, to mission too, to seek out the lost from every nation, to point them to you, to tell of you, the one who found us, the one who rescued us. Thank you that you have given us this hope, an ending love, amazing grace, Hope that can never fail, and life everlasting, starting today. Lord, we worship you and we praise you. And we join with all nations, your family across all the nations, saying together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are you now and forever. Amen. Let's uh, sing together our next song, a song that talks about our God who reigns and calls us to serve him and to share the good news. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of the one bringing good news. Let's uh, stand and sing. Pray.
first reading today is from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had, Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. The second reading today is from Romans 1, verses 8 to 16. I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve in my spirit in preaching the gospel of his Son, is my witness how constantly I remember you in my prayers at all times. And I pray that now, at last, by God's will, the way may be opened for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that's you, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that I plan many times to come to you, but but I've been prevented from doing so until now, in order that I might have, have a harvest among you, just as I have had among the other Gentiles. I am, I am obligated both to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel, also to you who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. <coughs> this month saw the death of George Verwer, who is famous as the founder of a mission organization, Operation Mobilization, or OM, as it's and more commonly known. OM has been hugely influential, sending many people on trips overseas to share the good news of Jesus and distributing large amounts of literature explaining that good news. And their work was often, I, I couldn't get a, um, a good photo, a colour photo that I had permissions to stream, um, but you can see he's got a jacket on that, that jacket is actually a map of the world. So he was famous. He went around with his blue jacket, which just was a map of the world. So you can imagine all the questions he gets. Why do you wear that jacket? Well, let me tell you why. <laughs> so he was a real evangelist. He wanted the world to know Jesus. Now, I myself was deeply influenced in my early Christian years by one of his books, um, No Turning Back. You can see the in yellow, <laughs> how yellow the pages are, how old the book it is. Um, it was at a time in my teens, early 20s, when people were influencing me to stop taking Jesus' message seriously. Don't take it too seriously. But Verber's book reminded me that Jesus wasn't a hobby, he wasn't a pastime, he wasn't just something you did on a Sunday. He wasn't even just a lifestyle choice. He was a whole life commitment to follow him. Matt, earlier, we've been looking through Matthew's Gospel earlier in Matthew chapter 16. Jesus said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Part of Jesus' call to his followers is to tell others about him. George Berber was influenced by the faith of his mother, by a neighbour who prayed for him for years, by another neighbour who invited him to come and hear a talk about Christianity, and then by the speaker who gave that very talk. In fact, it was Billy Graham, who many of you will have heard of him. But there you have a series of faithful people just living their lives before him, um, praying for him, inviting him, telling him. 
Now, 18 months ago, the session produced a, a two-year mission plan, um, and copies of this are in the welcome area and have been available for a few weeks now. This was to help our presbytery, uh, um, the kind of uh, regional uh, Church of Scotland, uh, determine which church buildings would be most suitable for future miss the future mission of the church and how to allocate a limited number of ministers to these churches. And we uh, were asked as a Kirk session to base our mission plan on the five marks of mission. Um, these marks were developed by uh, the Anglican Church, the Anglican Communion. And I've got these on a slide. These are to, one, to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, shortened to tell, to teach, baptize, and nurture new believers, shortened to teach, to respond to human need by loving service, shortened to tend, to transform unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind and pursue peace and reconciliation. And that's shortened to transform. And then to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. And these, as I've said, are sometimes abbreviated to tell, teach, tend, transform, and treasure. Five nice T's that are in that. Now, over the next few weeks, um, with one or two breaks along the way um, for Ascension Sunday, Pentecost, and an old age service. Um, we're going to look at these five marks of mission. And today we're going to start with that first one about proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, abbreviated to tell. Telling others the good news of Jesus. And to do that today, we're going to look at the, these final words of Jesus in Matthew's Gospel. These, um, the last two verses, verses uh, 19 and 20, have become known as the Great Commission. Go and make disciples of all nations. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we looked at a few verses from Matthew 28, the verses just before we come to the Great Commission. And uh, I hope you found it as encouraging as I did. It was um, this great res responsibility, this huge task, the great commission wasn't given to spiritual giants. It was given to uncertain, hesitant followers. And so it's really comforting, isn't it, to know that there's room for all of us um, in the purposes and plans of the Lord Jesus. And this group of believers, they didn't have a church sanctuary. They didn't have big structures to call base. They were simply called to follow. Quite apt for us as we meet here in the hall. We have to do things differently. But notice the key statement by Jesus and read for us by Peter. Just before the, the Great Commission... He gives the basis for the Great Commission. And he says this, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. The basis for the Great Commission is that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus. Now recall on Easter Sunday when we spoke about Jesus' resurrection his rising from the dead, and that this was God's approval, God's stamp of approval of the death of Jesus. His approval that the death of Jesus, um, his approval of the death of Jesus as a, a, a sacrifice for our sin. God accepted the sacrifice of Jesus on our behalf. Paul, one of Jesus' early followers and a key leader in the early church, wrote a number of letters uh, that we find in the New Testament. And he wrote this to the Christians in Rome, uh, chapter 6, 23. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life 
in Christ Jesus, our Lord. As a result of sin, there is a need for all of us to be reconciled to God. If we are, there is a promise of eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we aren't, the wages of sin, Paul writes, is death. There comes eternal death. God raised Jesus from the dead as his stamp of approval that the wages of sin had been paid for us. And Jesus, who was fully God and fully man, was able to be the mediator, the sort of go-between between us and God. So he was able to reconcile us to God as fully God Fully man, having um, given himself in a sacrifice that got the stamp of approval of God. So he has the authority to reconcile. Fully God, fully man, with a stamp of approval. And with this authority made clear, Jesus then says, Now go. He sends out his, his followers to call other people to be reconciled to God. Go, he says in verse 19, to all nations. Now, I'm sure George Bear will probably preach on this a thousand times. And it's, it's, it's a verse that's very often used to inspire Christians to go and serve um, overseas, to go abroad to serve in mission. But all nations included the Jews, as well as non-Jews. So if you kind of, the comparison with us today is it includes people in Scotland, as well as people in Spain, Turkey, Malawi, Ukraine. Go can mean a thousand miles. Go can mean one meter. Someone in our household. Five meters to our next door neighbor. All Christians are called to go. And why do we go? Jesus says in verse 19, the first part, go and make disciples. <coughs> now the key message of um, the Greek, the, 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 the New Testament is written in, in Greek, um, that the key message of, of the Greek is that we are to make disciples. It, it's not the going, it's it, who that's included. Literally, it says, going, make disciples, baptizing and teaching. In other words, Jesus says, make disciples, going, baptizing, teaching. It's the making disciples that is the really important bit. And we'll look more at that next week when, um, when we come to uh, the second mark, teach. But the first step in making disciples is that someone has to tell a person about Jesus. Someone has to hear. Someone has to tell them. Some more words from Paul to the Christians in Rome, this time chapter um, 10. Paul says, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Without somebody telling them? People won't hear about Jesus unless Christians go and tell we have incredible news to share, good news, but it's kind of no news if we don't share it. Isn't it? Great news! <coughs> we have good news to share, but it's no news if we don't share it. Let's pause to sing.
our next song, which is a, a statement of faith that we um, believe that Jesus has authority and that he sends us to all nations to proclaim the good news. Timothy, who he was encouraging in his work as a preacher in Ephesus, in, um, which is in modern-day Turkey, western Turkey. He wrote this more than uh, 30 years after Jesus' resurrection, um, and we can find that in 2 Timothy 4. This is what um, Paul wrote. The Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. In other words, all the non-Jews might hear it. No, and in other words, again, then all nations, Jew and non-Jew, recently the whole, the whole planet. So 
So Paul, he, um, he wasn't one of the original disciples. He was called to tell others about Jesus. One of Jesus' um, twelve disciples, John, he says a similar thing. Um, he wrote this in his first letter to Christians, um, uh, again, um, in the, the area around Ephesus. Um, but this time of even later, and maybe 40, 50 years later, same message, the same uh, call um, uh, to tell. This is the message we have heard from him, in other words, from Jesus, and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Going and telling, proclaiming the message that had been received from Jesus and then was passed on by, uh, by John to, to, to others, by Paul to others. That was their calling um, as Christians, to share it, to tell it. And it's passed on, a bit like um, uh, you know, a much bigger scale verbers experience of those people who told him in different ways. Um, it's been passed on to you and me as followers of Jesus. We are to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. The message received from Jesus that describes what his kingdom looks like. And we saw a lot of what that was in the Sermon on the Mount, didn't we? Um, incredible teaching. And that teaching described how his followers um, are to live. We're called to tell others about Jesus. Whether we go one metre or we go a thousand miles, we're to tell. Peter, another one of the twelve, um, original disciples wrote this to Christians in northern Turkey. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. And do this with gentleness and respect. So share the gospel but be listening. <laughs> the first person wants to listen, you've got your ten point sermon and you're going to get it. So no, listen. The conversation, listen. Where are people at? What are the questions they are asking? Listen. Respect their views, gentleness. But always be prepared to give an answer to everyone. Be prepared to tell others what Jesus has done for you, what he means uh, to you. Perhaps you've not quite got as far as saying, well, Jesus, that Jesus is Lord. But, you know, you're learning, you're exploring and speak to others, speak to people about your experience and what you're exploring. Now this may feel daunting. Oh, I don't want to tell anybody. I'm a bit shy. I, don't, I wouldn't know what to say. So look for a moment how the Great Commission ends. Those verses, go and make disciples. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. All that, we spoke earlier, of all authority being given to Jesus, and that includes the authority to help us carry out the Great Commission. He is with us in the task. In the notices earlier, I mentioned um, the meeting in the cottage this Wednesday, and that we're going to be hearing from a guest speaker, presenter, Michael Harvey. Um, again, a passionate Evangelist, somebody who really tries to think, how can the church, and not just um, you know extroverts who you know who are able um, just to shoot from the hip and um, talk about any topic and bring it round to Jesus? Not not that there's, there's not many of them. I'm not one of them. Um, but this is for anybody and everybody. Um, and he's going to explore something called Acorn. Um, this is not a, a gardening club meeting, so, so um, don't be mistaken. Um, but you will hear some very simple tasks um, to help us go and tell others. It's not complicated, it's a challenge to daily say the following prayer. 
Lord, today, is there someone you want me to connect with outside our church family? Very simple prayer. That we can say, and then the Jesus who is with us to the end of the age will answer that prayer. He doesn't leave us on our own to go and tell. He goes with us. He prepares the way. He helps us. Saying a prayer like that just opens us up to, uh, for the Lord just to say, oh yeah, yeah, I've got somebody you know, Gavin could go and speak to. Yeah, that person. I'll just work this to you. Yeah, he's going to meet him. Great. It's God who works in hearts of those um, who we will connect with. And in the incredible um, um, almighty presence and all presence of, of, of God, he, he'll, he's probably preparing that person before you even say the prayer. Um, and he's preparing them um, while you're talking to them and afterwards. Again, it's a conversation. He simply, um, what Michael teaches is um, you just say to someone, how are you? And when they say, fine, <laughs> as people do 99% of the time, he just always says, really? Are you? Quite, just some very little simple things just to start a conversation. Um, you know, we don't have to have all the answers. And we get asked questions we don't understand, we're not sure about. It. That's okay. You just say, well, I, I don't know. I can, I'll try and find that out. The second reading that Peter uh, read for us was the, the words of Paul to those uh, Christians in Rome. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew, then to the Gentiles. So the gospel is the power of God. Sharing Jesus comes with a power that changes hearts. Because God is at work. He's the work in our friends, the, the people we will connect with through his Holy Spirit. This power at work brings salvation, as Paul says. In other words, reconciliation to God. Christ is with us in that task and empowers us. So church, we're not restrained by a building, are we? We've just taken a few steps out of the sanctuary. We're not restrained by it. <coughs> so go and tell the good news. That is our calling. Always be prepared to give a reason for the hope that's in you. And surely, says Jesus, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. John Baxter's going to lead us in our prayers. Thank you for this fine day and the spring upon us. We sense your calm presence here. And through that calm now, we bring you our prayers for others and for our world. Thank you for our families and friends. We praise you, Lord. However, near and far, there are so many people who are hurting and struggling. We lift them up to you and ask that you would bless them, help them, heal them. May your peace fill their hearts and may joy shine. We ask that you intercede for them, fulfilling their needs according to your 
will. We also pray that you would use us to help them in whatever way we can. Open our eyes and make us aware of the opportunities we have to bless others in needs. Help us not to be selfish. Help us to share. Help us to tell. Here in Stewarton, encourage us all to engage with the local ministry and mission effort led by Peter Dewey Drive. Through this fellowship, we pray that the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ is received in the wider community. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by your grace you saved us. Your teaching makes it clear that to stay saved, we need to stay true to your ways. To do this, we need to clothe ourselves in our daily lives with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, tolerance and forgiveness, and above all, love. We ask too that those in authority over us live their lives similarly and act at all times with fairness, sound judgment and integrity. Lord, give us the means to change, to deal with change in our daily lives whether from sanctuary to hall, from pew to chair, from organ to piano, or with whatever circumstances befall us. When change seems difficult and challenging, give us the strength and wisdom to endure. We pray too that you give us the confidence to resist change that goes against your teaching and truth and to stand tall beside you. We commit this prayer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Before we sing our final hymn, just a wee reminder of the logistics. Tea and coffee through the, that door, and then when you've got your tea and coffee, if, rather than chatting at the tea and coffee, if you go up the corridor and you've got a pick of rooms, the cottage, the small home, or come back round here. Um, exit, you can go out that door and, 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 and out the way you came in, but this door also will, will be, be closed. That will be closed? No, perfect, it was open. That would be a good idea, that would make much more sense. Okay, and anything else needs reiterated? Is that pretty clear? Yes, okay. So let's uh, sing our final hymn, Go Forth and Tell. Jesus calls us to go and proclaim that Jesus is Saviour, Lord and King, and we go in his strength, not our own. Oh.
Living God, we have come to you to seek your help, offer our worship and declare our faith. Now we go for you to work for your kingdom, proclaim your love, and make known the gospel of Jesus Christ. Go with us and grant us grace to serve you, even as through Jesus you have served us.